So, Verticon was just a few uh, weeks ago yep. that uh, Vertical Aviation International ha hosted in Dallas. So, got to see the uh, R88, uh, and the uh, it was it was a pretty it was great uh, news for the industry. Um, tell me a little bit about the background of the 88 and uh, what you look at for timeline uh, yeah. and its progression. Yeah. So, first, I think the 88 is an aircraft that again Frank always wanted to build. And I think if Frank had more time and he, he, we were blessed to have as many years as we did with Frank, but I think overall, this is one of those things that they wanted to start, Kurt wanted to start it, but they didn't want to start it and not finish it. So they waited until we had the, the recent additions of Sean Doyle, who leads engineering and myself coming on board so that we could be both there for the beginning of the, the critical design phases and all of the certification and productionization. So that's why now, and that's why it's been in work for many years, but the really in earnest these last two years since Sean and I joined. The exciting part about the aircraft itself is I think it, it serves a mission that the aviation industry needs in, in fixed wing, it needs in rotary wing, it needs robust aircraft that are accessible and can be deployed all over the world in missions that sometimes they're a people mover, sometimes they're an equipment mover, sometimes they move critical supplies for aid. Firefighting is going to be an emerging need all over the world. And we do see it as, as a tool that can be transformative for the industry. I think our industry is healthiest when we're doing a lot of new product development. The product itself is in the buildup for the first flight vehicle now. A lot of components are running through the factory and are being put together on a small test fixture. And it's going to take some time still to get both the flight clearances, uh, these advanced aircraft, both because the flight controls are heavily integrated with the aircraft and the engine itself with its FADEC governed systems require a lot more airworthiness checks just because the things that software can do in the early development can be high risk. So it's important to go through all the checks and all the steps. So that will pace the, the schedule. We hope to fly at the latest, it'll be next year sometime. Hopefully it's earlier than that, but it's gonna depend a lot on these airworthiness checks. And then as time progresses, we, we expect by the end of the decade to have these aircraft in several of the more FAA consistent countries. So FAA certainly will have certification by the end of the decade in many countries that are our big consumers today. Like Brazil is a really great example. ANAC has been very progressive and very, very collaborative on validations of things like our horizontal stabilizer work we did the last couple of years. So we know they are ready and primed. It's a great relationship with our team. So this is the, the sort of thing that is a huge advantage for Robinson. We've routinely done critical flight testing, witness and delegated testing. We've done a lot of work in these foreign authority areas to build a relationship that we can depend on for an aircraft like the 88. So, so we feel pretty confident we are the, we're gonna be the fastest to certification and many of the choices we've made in the design are to accelerate the ability for us to, to deploy these aircraft because people ask a lot of questions about choices and things like the rotor system. There's a lot of reasons for that. One of the reasons for sure that plays a role is we, we know that rotor system very well and it has a lot more it can give in the same architecture and I think that will prove itself to be the fastest way to get an aircraft to market and help our customers that really are begging for it now. They're telling us this is a, for them it's an existential risk. The, the cost to operate some of the aircraft that dominate today uh, is getting unsustainable in their businesses. So we need to, to move quickly to help them keep keep viable, you know. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, by far the best aerobatic propeller ever come out. I use the Trailblazer. It adds performance to the Super Decathlon and dependability, and it's rugged. Hartzell's been an excellent partner for Whip Air, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demand. It's helping us all have better performing airplanes. It's such a proud honor to fly behind that propeller.